Hello and welcome to my tech look back for 2021 and a little bit of a look forward into 2022. This is just the tech that I use and abuse and get upset with and not tech in general, although I feel most tech is very, very similar. This is going to be in two parts, um, mainly because around to things to say, my mouth goes dry and I start to stutter. Although, having said that, I should be down the pub today. But I woke up this morning, had a look at the weather forecast and turned over and went back to bed. Probably that was the right thing to do. Anyway, let us start with mobile networks. Because for me, they are the thing that makes tech really tick. Up until mobile networks, it was desktop PC. And then, oh, look, you've got the internet, but mm, you went away and you had to come back to update things. With mobile networks, you can just go wherever you like, generally speaking. Okay. So I started the year with three contracts with 3UK. One for the iPhone, one for the Android phone, um, one for my MiFi, and the data sim in my iPad Pro. I've been having problems with three. One, every year they put the price up by retail price plus X amount percent for doing practically nothing. And for the last couple of years, their network, which they used to sell on the data network, has become completely saturated. It's fine first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Um, but in the daytime, you can sit there with full signal of strength and it will crawl. I don't know if you remember, um, in London quite a few years ago, there was a company called Relish, um, which was home 4G broadband. Three bought them and then rolled it out across the country and then keep having deals. And the network is... I hesitate to call it rubbish because the coverage is good. And in certain places where it's not saturated, it is really good. But their tech support and their customer support, not the best. Mind you, having said that, a lot of networks, well, especially on the customer support side of it, are poor. So anyway, when my two data sims um, in my iPhone and Android phone um, came to the end of August, I got a letter from them because they now have to tell you how much re-upping will be. So I thought, let's just have a try with another network on the Android phone. Okay, times are hard. So um, 20 gigs for £15 a month. Um, with Tesco's mobile, uh, a mobile virtual network operator uh, on O2, so are Sky and uh, various others as well. Their coverage is good, and um, 5G is thrown in with it. Um, coverage, most of the places I've gone to, been rather good. The only thing missing, well, there are two things. One coverage inside um, the Hereford Beer House is a bit lacking and two, they don't do Wi-Fi calling. I'm going to chase them up on the Wi-Fi calling and the Hereford Beer House, well, sometimes that's the way. Um, I re-upped with three uh, on my iPhone um, and it has got slightly better but they really need to up their game. I think their answer is we're spending lots of extra money on it. Um, doesn't seem to be affecting me around you. But they're hoping a lot of people will migrate onto 5G, which I'll come back to later. And that might help with the saturation problem, which, let's be honest, they created themselves. 
So, um, difficult. Difficult situation with mobile networks at the moment. I suppose I could try EE, but they are rather expensive, and they have that up the price every year sort of thing, whereas Tesco's don't. Plus, I get club card points, <laughs> which is extremely sad. Moving on. Um, I was going to upgrade my Android phone, which is currently a Pixel 3a, which I love. I think it's a great mid-range phone. It's well supported. You get updates every month. Security updates, that is. Although there are some feature updates as well because it's a Pixel phone. And they've updated it to Android 12. I'll come back to Android 12. And the update for it was the 5A. Only thing is, you can only get a 5A in the United States and Japan. And obviously, it's optimized for their bands. People have got it, love it. Marcus Brownlee loves it. I would like to have it. I, in the end, decided to hang on with my 3A because the battery's still fairly good. And uh, with the Tesco SIM, uh, 4G is not bad. A tethering is included, so... I'm happy with it. Um, and it's a fully up-to-date phone. Ah, right. iPhone. Okay, so I had a 10s, And the battery health was slowly going down. It wasn't the biggest of batteries anyway. And I had it for three years. So Santa brought me a 13 Pro for Christmas. 5G. Okay, I haven't had a great deal of experience with 5G because there's no 5G in Bedworth and I haven't been out a lot. Um, I've been to Newport and you get 5G from 3UK outside Poundland and in the area around the market bus stop. And I also got it on the bus at the market bus stop. Uh, I did a quick speed test. Um, about 99 down, 16 up. Hmm. I would have hoped for more up, let's be perfectly honest. But that's not bad. All I need now is a better coverage and more testing. I might actually do this tomorrow, and I'm, I'm not sure about popping out to the pub. Hmm. At least it stopped raining, which is good news. Okay, moving on to tablets. Okay, retirements. I have... Xiaomi Mai, he says, my Pad 3, which I got as a grey import and I had to pay import tax on, and it's still on Android 7. It took its design from the iPad mini. It's a really good device. Uh, it's solid. It's fast. It's as insecure as it can be being on Android 7. I've just used it for things like playing radio and the odd podcast and things like that. But I have a feeling that, really speaking, I shouldn't be using something as insecure as that, so I'm going to retire it at the end of the year. What I did get this year, and I traded it in, was my iPad Mini 5 for an iPad Mini 6. A15 chip. Much better screen. Um, uh, fingertip touch entry on the on-off button. Really, really, really good. And the A15 really goes, especially when I need it for video editing and photo editing and such like. It's a great device. And all that jelly scrolling thing, I haven't noticed it yet although i tend to have it more in landscape and it affected portrait more than anything but hmm, it is good so um looking a little bit ahead um the ipad pro is a 2018 version really needs updating um there is this year an m1 ipad I'm thinking maybe by, I don't know, halfway through next year or September-ish or whatever, 
there will be an M2, if there is an M2 chip, iPad, and I can upgrade. The big question for me is, do I upgrade with the cellular version or do I go Wi-Fi only? I could save myself a couple of bob there. I'm not decided yet. Um, data is expensive for uh, it and I don't get a particular lot, so not sure. I'm not sure if I'll actually get it, if I'll have enough money, to be perfectly honest, especially if there's a 6A pixel, he says, hopefully. Um, but it is something to look forward to. Okay, so that's it for tablets. Um, laptops, let's have a look. Okay, um, I'm doing this on a Dell laptop. It's an i7 machine. Lovely screen, touch screen as well, which I didn't think I needed, but I ordered it anyway, which was my mistake. It goes well. It can be upgraded to Windows 11. We'll come on to Windows 11, maybe in the second half. Um, the i7 is really good at photo editing, really good at video editing. It's well supported. I like it a lot. My other laptop, although I do have another Windows machine, but um, that's for emergency use only, but it is kept up to date. Um, my MacBook Pro 2016 i5. I love my Mac. I like the Mac operating system a lot. But, uh, okay, so it's had a new battery. And a new keyboard as well, but I don't like the butterfly keyboard. And the i5 struggles. Uh, there's eight gigs of store of memory on board. That kind of struggles as well, especially with video. And a 256 gig hard disk. Yeah, that struggles as well. So here's my plan. Trade it in if I can. But a 2022 MacBook Air with the M2. Again, I'm taking a guess here um, that it'll come out. I like smaller machines now. They are basically for when I go away. So they need to be portable. They need to be lightweight. They need to have good battery life. And they need to be good at video. That's what I want, to be perfectly honest. I want... Yeah, I want an M2 Mac. Uh, I don't know if they call it a MacBook Air or just a MacBook. I know they are redoing the design of the machine. It's not going to be uh, sloping towards the front, but I have a hankering. Desktop. Um, my desktop won't be able to run Windows 11 unless they change it. I could chase up the thing about the T2 chip on the motherboard, but... I don't see the point for Windows 11. Windows 10 supported to 2025, which will be when beyond the date of this machine. No, and it's good. It's an i9. It's got tons of memory. It's got tons of fast storage, and it hasn't let me down. So that's the first half. Coming soon, the second half. And I'm back, and this is part two. No contact lenses. Well, it's certainly darker, despite the fact it's near enough 10 to 10 in the morning, and it's a day later. So I'm going to try not to repeat myself, but I'm probably going to fail. Anyway, operating systems. I'm not sure if it was iOS 12 or iOS 13, rather a long time ago now, where the update was mainly about fit and finish, making things faster, more efficient code, bug fixing, not very much in the way of new things. That's what I like from operating system updates. Obviously, apart from security updates, but... Yeah, so let's start with Windows. Well, 
I was under the impression that Windows 10 was the last Windows and it would just be updated on a regular basis. And then this year, Windows 11 comes out. And then people started saying, well, they didn't actually say it would be the last one. And uh, well, there's a Windows 11 now. And for those of you who have got it or about to get it, it's not much shakes. Uh, different taskbar, new UI. It requires a trusted platform module 2 chip. So my laptops will do it. My desktops won't. Although I should really check to see if the motherboard actually has one of them on there and it's just disabled. But I don't think I will, to be perfectly honest. Windows 10 goes on until 2025 for security and support. And my desktop will be, well, let's be quite honest, well out of it by then. So I'm not going to worry. And I doubt very much whether I will update the laptops. Uh, people who have used both. Well, first of all, Windows 11 is still experimental, early days, buggy, and it removes some power user features, which I don't really want. However, both Windows 10 and Windows 11 have gone up to yearly update cycles. So no more H1 or H2 which I'm really pleased about. Um, just one update a year, please. That's all I need. Actually, I could quite easily go to one every two years, just the security updates and release bits and pieces as and when they're finished and ready. Uh, try not to announce them all the time and then just not deliver them. Mac OS 10 Monterey, I'm looking at you. Well, actually, it's not 10, it's 11 now, isn't it? Uh, so, Windows, a new operating system, which I'm going to not use, and keep on the old one, which is still supported. Mind you, um, there is Windows 10 on ARM, which at the moment runs on exclusively um, Qualcomm chips. And it's a bit rubbish. If you want to see it run really well, Apple's M1. Okay, so Windows. Uh, just carry on as you are, but once a year updates. Let's be honest. Um, 21H2 was... Was there anything in that? Well, I didn't notice. Moving on to Monterey, the current version of Mac OS. Big Sur, when I did that, there were all sorts of problems. Basically, had to rebuild the machine. And I said I would wait at least a goodly couple of months before I did anything about upgrading in the future. Turned out a fortnight, and it was fine. It took a while, but it was fine. Um, bits missing. I think that's the main part of it. There are bits missing. Um, and there's new wallpaper. Um, and there's security things. And I could really do that, basically, uh, going on to the... Okay, so we're on once a year. Let's go uh, once every two years. Because mature operating systems, you don't need all these updates and let's be honest there's a bit that's missing universal control it was supposed to be really really cool it's really really not there and that was something that was announced back in WWDC sometimes doing things is far more difficult than announcing things hmm okay moving on to iOS iPad OS TV OS yeah, lots of updates, um, relatively stable, uh, lots of security enhancements. Walking back a little bit on the um, CSAM bit. 
Hmm. He says, ah, uh, nah. you can go from one to the other and not really notice a great deal of difference. It's mainly in the apps. Um, the only thing that's worrying me is Copied. Um, Copied is a great um, clipboard enhancer app for um, iOS and macOS, except the, um, the developer seems to have disappeared. He did update it for iOS 14, um, but hmm, I might have to rethink my whole clipboard management on iOS, iPadOS and macOS. I might be going across to copy him. Could be something for 2022. He slips that one in there. Okay. Um, and the last one, Android 12. Not keen on that at all. Really um, played around a lot with the UI user interface. You can't find things, those things that you can find that you use all the time, like turning the Wi-Fi on and off, are really not in a good place. Not at all. Um, okay, take me back to 11, put the security patches in there, I'd be fine. Yeah, don't mess around with things that work, especially for old guys like myself. Okie dokie. Apps. Okay. If you're running Windows and you need a camera app that does video recording, there are lots of them around, but don't pay for anything. As part of the outfit, um, the Windows camera app, I'm using it at the moment. It's really good. It's quite simple. Um, you can get advanced bits as well, but... Um, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. Um, and it does the rule of thirds grid across the screen, which I love. Okay. All my other apps are uh, iPadOS, iOS, which says quite a lot about what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. The first one, if you use Apollo, sorry, <laughs> it's called Apollo. If you use Reddit, um, and on the desktop, the Reddit website is not bad, but on a mobile device, the Reddit app is... I don't like it. Apollo is really good. Really, really, really good. Um, it has its own subreddit. Uh, the guy who does it, um, very approachable, lots of updates, lots of bug fixes. You have to pay for it, but it's a one-off. Uh, if you don't pay for apps, uh, the developer doesn't make any money and sooner or later it's going to go away. I like supporting good developers. I like apps that are developed on a regular basis. I'm not particularly keen on subscriptions, but hey, you know. Sorry, I'm just touching the screen to keep it alive. I need a screen keep it alive app for iOS, which is probably against the... Um, Apple developer guidelines, but there you go. Actually, no, what about Waze and such like? Mm. Okay, second one, Filmic Pro. Yeah, video recorder, camera app, uh, really good. Uh, deserves the pro name. Support is really good. Uh, it had a bit of a problem with the iPad Mini 6. Basically didn't fit the screen. Uh, couldn't touch all the buttons. Support were... Well, I don't think they believe me, but I think they had a Mini 5. They actually did have a Mini 5. And then someone else came along and they were all over it and they were fast and they were very positive. You can't go wrong with it, to be perfectly honest. Although, still have a soft spot for Movie Pro. Both are paid, by the way. Uh, not particularly cheap, but sometimes you have to pay for quality. <clears throat> okay, and uh, talking about paying for quality, on the iPhone, on the iPad, and on the M1 Max, LumaFusion. What an excellent video editor. Version 3 is out, and coming soon, multi-camera mode. It already supports multiple timelines and 
I shared a load of plugins now. Um, it's if you want to do anything well on iOS and iPad OS in terms of video, this is what you need. Really good, can recommend it. Again, not particularly cheap, but in terms of up against desktop apps, uh, I think it's about 20, 30 quid. Go for it, easily. And although I said I don't like subscription apps, Tweetbot. Twitter has been hard on Twitter clients in the past. Um, they rolled that back slightly and allowed more access to their API. I think it's only about six quid a year, but Tweetbot is excellent and has a Mac version as well and synchronizes all around. If you're on Twitter and you're in the Mac iOS world, Tweetbot, really, really, really good. Okay then, um, other things, travel routers, my barrel travel router, um, thank you Alison Sheridan from the Podfeet podcast, it's because of you I got this, um, the problem to be solved, you can only have two or three dependent whether it's primary or travel lodge devices on the fast Wi-Fi that you pay for. I have far more devices than that. You won't be surprised to hear. I want them all on there. A travel router is the way around it. Especially a travel router where you can copy your laptop's MAC address. So it pretends to be your laptop. I've tested it already. I'm very pleased with it. It was on sale at Amazon. And it does run. And it does LAN. <sighs> It does a lot of things, actually. Very, very pleased with it. And also from the Pod Feet podcast, the HomeKit Miros or Meros Wi-Fi plugs. They are powering this laptop at the moment. Well, one of them is. Um, add it to HomeKit. Just scan a QR code. Uh, you can then join it into the Meros app, and it'll update the firmware really can't go wrong unless you're in Ireland where things have gone wrong but I found the setup incredibly good two minutes for each of them and um, the home app just synchronizes around all my iPads and iPhone uh, this is the one I mentioned earlier on where I tracked it all the way from China unfortunately the UK plug home cord kit version now sold out 15 quid a throw and the two pack was 30 quid and I don't think I paid for postage so that was in there as well I'm probably going to order some more when they come back into stock I know China and all that but everything's made in China so what can you say okay um lastly in other things Apple TV 4k 2021 right I know it's expensive and you can get like a Fire TV stick or you can get a Roku box. But the apps on here are really rather good. And I'm sure you can get a workaround for getting screencasts online on your TV. But the Apple TV is probably the easiest way of doing it. And the remote control is now top notch. Uh, although it's a bit small and you still lose it. But what can you do? <sighs> And, of course, Apple TV+. Plus. So, and we had um, For All Mankind. All Mankind was really good. And uh, The Foundation. Okay, my uh, first year free subs is about to uh, run out at the end of January. Probably won't re-up until something good comes back. Mm, 4 99 a month isn't bad. And the Apple TV integrates beautifully okie dokie then I'm moving on to things that are coming for 2022 that I haven't already mentioned I probably actually need a new home router my ASOS router uh, is not getting updates anymore which is not the best way of doing things 
and I really need to go to Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on things during the year, and when I get enough money, um, a new router. Okay, what else in the year? Web 3. I don't know if you remember up all the way back to 2006, Web 2.0, Ajax, Asynchronous, XML, and uh, actually, no, Asynchronous, JavaScript, and XML. Yes, gets it finally. Sorry about that. Um, all those websites, interactivity and such like. Web 3 is slightly different. Web 3 is decentralized web. It's taking away who controls the web from the large tech companies and putting you back in control. It involves things like the blockchain. It's going to be big. People are going to be mentioning it all the time. And a lot of them won't understand what it's about. It's just the next step on. And it's about taking back control. And also, podcasting 2.0. If you know your podcasting, you'll know Adam Curry. Go to podcastingindex.com or newpodcastapps.com. No, it's new po um, podcastingindex.org, I think. Well, it could be both. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're getting your podcast through Spotify or Amazon or such like, that's not really podcasts. It's not a podcast unless it's got an RSS feed. Uh, ties in neatly with Web3 and the decentralized web. Don't let people control what you do. Although I'm probably going to update this to YouTube, so... Hmm, not very decentralized there. Anyway, um, those are the things I think are going to be big in 2022. Yeah, I move away from big tech to smaller tech, to the blockchain and such like. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. By the time you watch this, it is going to be 2022. It's probably going to be raining, although the weather forecast says unusually mild. Feedback through the usual sources. And um, thank you very much and bye-bye.